Your friends or other people you surround yourself with may be the reason of your downfall. Epicurus, a wise thinker, once said, Hang out with people who make you better, those who bring out the good in you. You've probably heard people say, your actions and thoughts are shaped by the closest five people around you. Let's look at this idea through a stoic lens today. We'll talk about 12 kinds of people who might slow down your growth in stoic thinking and why you might want to rethink being friends with them. Before we start, please hit the like button to help me share more about stoic philosophy. Stay away from these 12 types of negative people. 1. The whiner. We all know someone who's never happy with anything, the weather, their job, or even a meal out. They always have something bad to say. You might think, I'll just ignore them, but it's not that simple. Being around negativity all the time can really get you down, like a leaky tap that slowly empties your emotional tank. Stoicism tells us to look for real solutions instead of just complaining. Picture working with someone who's always complaining. Every meeting ends up being a long list of complaints instead of helpful discussions. It makes everyone feel bad and gets in the way of solving problems. You might start feeling really fed up with the project or even everything in general. For example, imagine you're working on a big project at work and there's a co-worker, let's call them John, who always finds something to complain about. At every meeting, John focuses on what's going wrong, from too much work to problems with the plan. At first, you might try to be supportive, but after a while, John's constant negativity starts to bring everyone down. Meetings become stressful and don't get anywhere, leaving everyone feeling tired. According to Stoic philosophy, there's a way to handle this. Focus on what you can change. You can't change John's attitude, but you can change how you react and think. Work on doing your best instead of letting John's negativity affect you. Next, question John's negative views. Sometimes what they think isn't really true or that important. Challenge those negative thoughts and try to see the good parts of the project. Then, make the atmosphere positive. Use stoic ideas and a positive mindset to positively affect your team and create a better work environment. Stoicism teaches us it's not about changing others, but handling and responding to what happens around us. This way, you keep a positive view and focus on finding solutions instead of getting lost in someone else's negative outlook. How does Stoicism help us handle a complainer? There are a few ways to deal with it. First, stay away from this person as much as you can. If you can't, because they're a family member or co-worker, then try to mentally step back when they start complaining a lot. Imagine their complaints are like a storm, loud and messy, but short-lived and not strong enough to shake your inner calm. Your third choice is to shift the talk to finding solutions or change the subject to something more helpful. Marcus Aurelius said, you have control over your mind, not on what happens outside. Understand this and you'll find strength. This stoic advice reminds us to protect our peace of mind carefully, making sure the negativity from constant complainers doesn't knock us off our path of staying strong and good. Two, the person who always brings drama everywhere they go. Imagine your life is like a smooth sailing boat, but suddenly you run into someone who's like a big storm of drama. They always have problems, arguments or big issues going on, and they can pull you into their chaos just like a storm pulls things into its center. At first, you might think their drama is exciting, like they're full of energy and passion. But soon, you'll find out being around them is draining and risky, like trying to sail through a bad storm. Dealing with someone who's always in drama is tough because their problems start to feel like your problems too. Their drama spreads to you and you might end up in fights that you had nothing to do with at the start. 
Let's say you have a friend, Lois, who often fights with other people in your group. Lois recently argued with some friends over something in the group, turning into a big fight. Lois is really upset and can't understand why the others don't agree with her. She often talks badly about them and is really frustrated. Being around this makes you feel stressed and caught in the middle. Lois keeps talking about these fights, making it the main thing the group talks about, and it doesn't seem like she'll stop. You've tried to help Lois by talking and giving advice, but it didn't calm things down or change how she sees things. To deal with this without getting pulled into the negativity, you can try something called reflective listening, based on stoic ideas. Instead of arguing with Lois or getting into the fight, you just repeat what she says without judging. For example, if Lois is upset because others don't agree with her, you could say, so, you're really upset they don't see it your way, right? This way, you avoid getting into the argument and making things worse, but you also show Lois that you're listening and understand how she feels. But, if Lois keeps causing problems and you realize that staying in this group doesn't make you happy or help you reach your goals, you might want to use the last tip, start being busy on purpose. This could mean taking a break from the group or finding other activities and friends that make you feel better. Stoicism teaches us to value our time a lot and sometimes that means not being available for other people's issues, especially if those issues keep happening and never get solved. You could turn off your phone for a while, set times when you're just focusing on your work or self-improvement, and let people know you can't be disturbed during those times. To put it in Seneca's words, being truly happy means enjoying what's happening right now without worrying too much about what will happen later. This idea is really useful when you're around negative people, Instead of worrying about what drama might happen next, concentrate on what's happening right now, which you can control. Live your life without letting someone else's drama get in the way. Aim to keep your journey smooth and peaceful, steering clear of any drama that could mess with your personal growth and peace. 3. The Downer Picture yourself as an artist working on a painting, adding color, depth, and life with every brush stroke. Then, a pessimist walks in, sees your painting, and starts to judge everything. Is that the right color? That looks unrealistic. You know, most artists don't succeed. Their negative comments are like gray strokes on your colorful painting, bringing down the mood and adding doubt. For instance, Let's say you're pumped about starting a new career. You've looked into it, talked to professionals, and maybe even taken some classes. But when you tell some people about it, they immediately start pointing out all the potential problems. It's a tough market. Do you really have the skills? What if it doesn't work out? Suddenly, their doubts become your doubts, and your confidence starts to shake. Don't let their negativity get to you, or shake your confidence. Instead of getting dragged down by doubt, ask yourself questions to find solutions. Questions like, why is the market competitive? How can I improve my skills? What can I learn from any setbacks? This turns their negativity into a chance to think about solutions and how to tackle challenges instead of just focusing on the bad stuff. The trick is to keep believing in yourself and not let anyone's doubts make you less determined. When facing a pessimist, especially if they're close to you, try asking for their advice rather than just talking about your plans. This can make them more helpful and less critical. Another strategy is to challenge their negativity with positive confrontation. If they say something like, you can't switch careers now, ask them back. How do you think someone could successfully change careers? This shifts the conversation to a more positive and constructive place. Think about what the Stoic thinker Epicurus said. We're given two ears and one mouth for a reason, so we can listen more than we talk. 
Listening isn't about taking in all the negativity people throw at us. It's about sorting through what's being said to find the useful bits among all the noise. When people full of negativity start to cloud your vision with their doubts, it's important to pause and reflect. 4. The overly positive person. You know the type, always full of smiles and good vibes, quick to drop an emoji in every message. They're the ones who tell you to just cheer up when you're having a hard time, brushing off your real feelings with a sweep of unchecked cheerfulness. Picture your life as a garden. It has its beautiful flowers, but also weeds and pests. The overly positive person only wants to talk about the flowers. Got bugs on your plants? Just look at the blooms, they suggest. While they mean well, this attitude can leave you feeling like your true feelings don't matter and that you're not being seen. For example, say you're dealing with a tough breakup. It's a roller coaster of sadness, confusion, and trying to find your footing again. Breakups are tough, bringing out feelings of hurt, turmoil, and a sense of loss. When you hear from someone overly positive during these times, their advice can seem out of touch. There are plenty more fish in the sea, just be happy, they might say. While there's a kernel of truth there, it overlooks the real pain and struggle you're in the midst of. A breakup can feel like losing a part of yourself, and just being told to be happy doesn't cut it. This extreme push for positivity overlooks the complexity of our emotions and life's realities. Life isn't just about happiness. We also need to face and deal with sadness, grief and letdowns. These feelings are a normal part of life, and feeling bad about having them only makes things worse. Rather than trying to bury negative feelings under a pile of forced smiles, it's healthier to face them, accept them, and think about how they might teach us something. Finding a balance between the good and bad lets us live more fully and authentically. How do you keep your garden thriving without letting those overly positive people drown it with their relentless cheer? One way is to have a conversation that acknowledges both the good and the bad. For instance, if they tell you to always look on the bright side, like, at least you're healthy, you could agree but also mention, yes, I'm thankful for my health, but it's still okay for me to be upset about this. I can appreciate my health and feel sad at the same time. You can also use a concept known as emotional granularity, which is about recognizing and naming the wide array of feelings you have, both happy and sad. When someone insists on you being only happy, take time to understand and express your complex emotions. Saying something like, today I'm feeling a bit down because of a certain reason, and that's perfectly fine, helps you acknowledge and own your feelings. Seneca, a Stoic philosopher said, True happiness comes from understanding our responsibilities and enjoying the moment without worrying too much about what's to come. Notice how he talks about a balance, acknowledging our responsibilities, which might not always be pleasant, while still finding joy in the now. Stoicism isn't about ignoring the bad or only focusing on the good. It's about accepting life's full range with calmness. So, when that overly positive person starts throwing their confetti of happiness all over your carefully tended garden, step back for a moment. Remember, a garden grows best with both sunlight and rain, just as we grow by experiencing the full range of emotions. Continue to tend to your garden, valuing its depth and complexity. 5. The person who always feels like a victim. Picture life as a chess game where everyone has the same pieces and aims to win. You plan your moves, sometimes you give something up, and other times you take a chance. But the person who always feels like a victim blames the game, the chess pieces, or the other player for every mistake they make. They think that they're always losing not because of choices they've made, 
but because something else is always against them. They tell stories of how things always go wrong for them, making themselves out to be the one who can't catch a break. This chess game idea helps us see how we all face challenges and have to make choices. Just like moving pieces on a chessboard, we need to think ahead. Sometimes give up things and sometimes risk something for a bigger goal. What makes successful people different from those who see themselves as victims is how they handle tough times and setbacks. Victims often point fingers at everything else, the game, the chess pieces, or the other player, when things don't go their way. They don't own up to their part in the situation, thinking instead that some outside force is always to blame, making them feel trapped in a losing game. On the other hand, successful people know life throws curveballs, and there are things beyond our control, but they focus on how they can move forward and make the best next move. It's about understanding that everyone runs into problems and things outside our control can knock us down. The real difference is in how we pick ourselves up and learn from those tough times. You might end up getting pulled into their stories, maybe as the one who's always there to listen. Imagine you've spent hours hearing a friend blame all their relationship problems on their exes. This not only takes up a lot of your time, but might also start to make you think the same way in your own life. What should you do when you're dealing with someone who always feels like a victim, especially if it's someone close to you? A good but less common strategy is to ask them questions that make them think more about their situation. Instead of just giving them answers or always trying to fix their problems, ask things like, what do you think you could change here? Or how do you plan to handle this part of your life? Another way is to show them you care and understand, but not try to save them from every problem. Listen to them, but don't take on the job of solving all their issues. Think about what Epicurus, a wise old thinker said, the best way to get back at someone who's wronged you is to be nothing like them. If you find yourself getting sucked into the victim story, fight the urge to start thinking like them. Take charge of your own life, make your decisions, and remember, in life's chess game, feeling trapped is often a choice, not something that's set in stone. Keep moving forward. Be smart about the sacrifices you make, and aim for growth and understanding, not for getting even or feeling sorry for yourself. It's important to say that some people really do face big challenges and unfair situations, but the kind of victim we're talking about here uses their problems as an excuse to not try to change anything or take responsibility for their part in their issues. 6. The Time Sucker Picture your day as a well-arranged piece of music where each note is something you need to do. But then the time sucker comes in, hitting all the wrong notes and messing up your carefully planned tune. They're the ones who always seem to need your time and attention, but don't really give you anything useful back. You might have a friend who always starts endless, aimless chats that leave you feeling worn out and off track or maybe a co-worker who keeps bothering you with minor things, making you miss your deadlines. Time suckers not only eat up your time, but also mess with your focus, your ability to get things done, and your calm. To handle time suckers well, it's important to set clear boundaries. Let them know when you're okay with talking or meeting, and when you need to work without any interruptions. Make it clear you value their time just like you want them to value yours. You could also steer their requests towards something that takes less time. Like if a friend always wants to talk on the phone for ages about nothing much, try suggesting you stick to texts or emails for the small stuff. This way, you take back control of your time and stop it from being wasted. Taking the example of a friend who often starts long, unclear phone calls, we see a way to manage our time better and stay productive. 
suggesting moving to quick, clear texts or emails saves time and makes talking easier for both of you. This switch lets you talk when it suits you, keeps messages short and to the point, helps you reply faster, and makes it easier to talk over and sort out specific things without needing a long chat. This makes sure both of you use your time well and get stuff done more smoothly. By doing this, you take back control of your time and keep being productive in a friendly and smart way, suggesting a better way to keep in touch. This makes things better and more convenient for you and your friend. Stoic thinking teaches us to know what we can control and what we can't. Time suckers try to take over our time and focus, but you can keep control by setting clear limits and managing your time on purpose. Seneca, a Stoic thinker, said that our time seems short, not because we don't have enough of it, but because we waste a lot of it. Choosing to spend time with people who help you grow and live by Stoic values is key to getting better at Stoic philosophy and improving yourself. 7. The Manipulator Think of your life as a movie where you're the main character, deciding what happens, who helps you, and how it all ends. The manipulator acts like a sneaky director, quietly changing your movie's script until you notice things aren't going the way you planned. They're really good at messing with your feelings, using sweet talk, making you feel guilty, or lying to get you to do what they want. For instance, you might have a friend who always gets you to pick up the tab for dinner by talking about how hard things are for them, making it really awkward to say no because it feels like you're helping them out. It's tough to deal with someone who manipulates like this. One way to handle it is listening to what they're saying, but don't let it push you around emotionally. Another way is to be clear about what you're okay with and stick to it. If they try to make you lend them money or do something you're not cool with, say no clearly, but stay chill. Stoic philosophy teaches us that we can't control everything that happens to us, but we can control how we react. Manipulators play on your natural reactions, like wanting to be nice, feeling guilty, or wanting people to like you. By choosing to react differently, you take back control of your own story. If there's a manipulator in your life, remember that you're the one who's really in charge of your story. Make sure your life follows your own values and choices. Stand firm and don't let anyone twist your life's plot. In this busy world, full of distractions and people pulling you in different directions, it's really important to focus on taking care of yourself and respecting your own needs. By not letting others manipulate you and sticking to your choices, you're looking after your emotional health and making sure that the way you interact with people is grounded in strong values. So, think of your life as a book you're writing every single day through the choices you make and the things you do. Don't let others mess up the story you're trying to tell. Stand by your independence, keep true to what you believe in, and keep steering your life story even when things get tough. By doing this, you're giving yourself power and building a life that truly shows who you are and what you aim to do. 8. The one who always goes overboard in their spending and indulging. Stoicism teaches the value of moderation, suggesting that gathering more stuff often just changes our problems instead of solving them. Seneca pointed out that those who chase after too much pleasure usually end up harming themselves. This could be an obsession with getting more things, eating too much, or any kind of overdoing it, which leads to losing control and causing chaos in their lives. Take Tom as an example. He loves living large, buying fancy things, being a regular at big parties, and eating out at fancy places all the time. Tom is always on the lookout for happiness in the next purchase or gourmet meal, spending lots of money on things he doesn't need, and burning the candle at both ends with his lavish lifestyle. 
Tom is exactly who the Stoics warned us about. He tries to find joy and satisfaction in collecting and consuming a lot, especially stuff and luxury experiences. This leads him to lose control over his budget, his time and his energy. Stoicism reminds us to value self-restraint, moderation and moral living more than just chasing after feel-good moments and things. Stoic beliefs are all about balance, preferring moderation and focusing on deeper spiritual values over material ones. They teach that real happiness comes from knowing our limits and choosing a life guided by ethical living and self-discipline. For someone like Tom, learning to appreciate deeper joys and controlling his desires for more and more could guide him to a truly balanced and fulfilling life. Stoics believe happiness isn't about having everything, but finding contentment in simplicity and being mindful about our choices and their impact. 9. The one who just cannot stop gossiping. In our world where it's so easy to chat and spread news fast, gossiping has become a common issue. Gossip spread rumors without caring if they're true or thinking about the harm they might cause. Hanging out with them is like planting seeds of doubt and confusion in your life. Marcus Aurelius once advised, don't waste your time arguing about what makes a good person, just be one. Being stoic is all about chasing after virtue and truth. Getting caught up in gossip takes you off this path. It's crucial not just to steer clear of gossiping yourself, but also to keep distance from those who don't value honesty and integrity. In short, be wary of people who spread rumors without checking facts and don't trust those who don't stick to moral and truthful paths. 10. The Eternal Pessimist While some might find beauty in a cloudy sky, pessimists only anticipate the rain. Their mindset is like a dark room with no windows for light, focusing solely on the negatives and missing the chances for growth that difficulties often present. Marcus Aurelius encourages us to let go of our grievances as it's in letting go that these grievances lose their hold on us. This highlights the power of perspective and how our interpretation and response to events can change our entire experience. Having an optimistic or at least a balanced view is key in Stoicism. It teaches us that it's not what happens to us, but how we perceive and react to it that disturbs our peace. It's wise to keep your distance from those wrapped up in negativity. Our friendships and connections greatly influence our life's direction. Why let someone bring you down at the high points or make the tough times even harder? 11. The Overpromiser This person is all about making grand promises they can't keep. They get you excited about big plans or promises, but when it's time to make things happen, they're nowhere to be found or they have a bunch of excuses. Trusting them usually ends up in letdowns and wasted time. It's like trying to grab a cloud, impossible and disappointing. It's key to notice when someone's actions don't match up with what they say and to guard your expectations and what you invest in them. 12. The Yes Man Friend This type of friend agrees with everything you say without ever giving their own take or challenging you. It might seem nice to always have someone on your side, but it doesn't help you grow. Being around someone who only echoes your thoughts keeps you stuck, stopping you from learning new things or seeing different ways of thinking. Real progress comes from talking things out, even arguing sometimes, to really understand different sides of a story. It's good to have friends who think differently and can talk about it without causing trouble, pushing you to really think about what you believe and why. Thanks for watching till the end. Here is a piece of advice from me. Get rid of these types of people as soon as you can. If you can't fix them, then just leave, or they will keep ruining your life one way or another. 
I hope these points will make it easier for you to spot what's wrong with the people you surround yourself around. If you found this video helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. As always, until next time.